okay? Yeah. Can you hear me? Kolo mer kra ba'amar ma'ekra. Kolo basar chatzir. Bechol chasto ketzitz hasadeh. Yavesh chatzir nabel tzitz ki ruach Adonai nashmabot. Achein chatzir ha'am. Yavesh chatzir nabel tzitz udavar Eloheinu yakum liolam. A voice says, cry out, but I ask, what shall I cry? All flesh is like grass, and all of its beauty is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, and the flower fades, when a wind from God blows upon it. Surely, therefore, people are like grass. The grass withers, and the flower fades, but the word of God endures forever. Mizmor le David Adonai Roi lo et sar bina deshi arbitzeni amem en achot ina haleni nafshi yeshavev yancheni v'magle tzedek l'man shemo gam ki elech begeitz hamavet lo ira ra ki ata imadi the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want he has me lie down in green pastures he leads me beside the still waters he guides me on paths of righteousness. He revives my soul for the sake of his glory. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no harm for you are with me. Your staff and your rod, they comfort me. You set a table inside of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall abide in the house of the Lord forever. I know that people would come to your father for advice. There were associates of your dad in the business world and among his friends who called upon him for advice. They felt he was good at solving their problems. They thought of him as a friendly man and supportive. There were years, of course, when your father had financial success and economic success. He had friends and colleagues who enjoyed being with him. Denise and Bruce at home, your father was a very hard driving man. He was a perfectionist who wanted things done his way. He was forceful and assertive. I know you shared with me that he was a very tough father, that he was a disciplinarian, he was very strict, a very strong personality. In fact, you felt that that personality did not always leave room for other opinions like your own. There were chores to be done and there was a right way to do it and that was his way. I think he felt he was trying to teach you so that you would not be taken advantage of in life. He was afraid you'd be taken advantage of. He felt it was a tough world there and that was his way, I guess, of preparing you for it. He had grown up the youngest of three. He had two older sisters. Although he did not speak a lot about childhood with you, he did talk about a, a few scrapes he got in his childhood. He came from a Yiddish-speaking household, his father from Romania, his mother from Russia. His parents were very generous, very giving people. He was in service to our country during the Korean War, and I know he saw life and death around him. He met your mother, and they were married for 63 years. As you grew up in their home, Judaism was important as you two were growing up. You were sent to Sunday school and bar mitzvah, Denise, your dad, encouraged you to find a synagogue when you moved. So clearly, Judaism was something he stressed. As much as he insisted to both of you that you learn his lessons, it was clear that in your dad's own life, he still had lessons of his own to learn. There was a period of greater economic success, and then there were also some years of lesser economic success, setbacks that were difficult for him to take. If you felt that it had been difficult to suggest to him alternate ways different than his way, he also learned that his way was not a guarantee that everything would always work out. You know, anyone who's ever read the Ten Commandments knows that we're supposed to honor our father and our mother. You know, a relationship with a mother or a father is always uneven. Because it starts out when they give you life and you can never really catch up to that. And yet, because they give you life, you honor them. Interestingly enough, in the Bible, never does it say you're, you have to love your parents. 
It's not that the Bible doesn't know the word love. It tells you to love a friend. It tells you to love your neighbor. It tells you to love the stranger. It never tells you you have to love you. It never tells you you have to love your parents. Now, ladies, I don't want you to think you can't. You shouldn't love your parents. I, want you to, I don't want you to get the wrong idea. But I think what it does mean is that relationships like these are very, very complicated. And they're being made, and you may not always feel love. And so they give a different standard. It's not love that's the standard. It's that you try to honor your parents. You honored him by trying to respond to him in life. He did enjoy being a grandparent and having these grandchildren in his life. I know he also enjoyed uh, tennis and racquetball. He competed in tournaments, won trophies. I wish it were that simple that life would always award us with trophies. It would be nice, but it's not real. That's not how life is. In the end, life is what we make of it, which I mean to say life is what we learn from it. We're all learning lessons each day. You too have learned lessons in your life, some of which taught you how to act in life, and some of those lessons advised you on how not to act. Your dad, we hope your dad, continued to learn lessons about life. We hope that he knew that you two remained loyal to him. I know he will be a powerful influence in you, and you will sort out the lessons for yourself as you move through life. Denise?
was very strong, strongly encouraged me as to join the sorority, knowing how difficult it was for me to meet new people and make friends due to my shyness back then. And then when I really connected with a true friend, um, who I'm still friends with today, he even paid for her to um, her airlines to come and visit me during one summer. There were some fun things and places that he took us as a family together. Um, I had to kind of search hard. We never really went on family vacations or anything. Um, like, <clears throat> they, they sometimes were far in between, but I remember going to Punderson Park and going rowboating that he would take us um, frequently. And he liked to go to some festivals like Stra Strawberry Festival or the German Festival at the Painesville Fairgrounds. Remember one um, special trip, we went to Akron, that was our big <laughs> getaway, to go to some museum, I think it was about trains. Um, and then I think when I was younger, maybe we went to the zoo or to Cedar Point. He always liked um, taking us to Sugar and Falls for walks. Um, he did support me with the career I chose and um, I guess I'm pretty sure he was proud how hard I worked in school and in my job and knew I put my whole heart in my work. He also encouraged me to, you know, stay healthy and make friends, get involved in my community, you know, find outside activities other than just working, and to make a connection with the Jewish synagogue and, and community, which I always did whether it was in New York or Philadelphia or Chicago. Um, he also knew how much I loved animals. He not, did not like to see me get upset when one of them died. The only pet I was allowed to have growing up was a guinea pig, but because I got so upset, he decided that he didn't want to see me in so much pain and wouldn't allow me to have another pet or maybe Maybe that was his way of making his excuse because, I don't know, he was always fussy about the mess. Well, when I went, we went to my grandparents for the holidays, there was one dog, her name was Pixie, and she would sit by him and look at him until he would at least acknowledge her, and then he would like pet her, like give two fingers to her. And then growing up, there was a neighborhood dog um, princess and he would always let us know when she came by for a cookie and kind of what surprised me is sometimes I would bring home my bunny and he would sit there and tell me how sorry he felt for the bunny and because it was in a cage um, at home I would always keep it out of the cage but I was thinking to myself if I kept him out of the cage he would not be too happy with the mess the bunny left Thing, even though sometimes he didn't want me to do something, like buying my house, he tried every angle to talk me out of it, but once he realized that, he was supportive and helped me find a real estate person and made sure everything went, went correctly and right with the house. Uh, also, I said, he finally bought me a bike when I was in, in my 50s. It was, I don't know why, he always had to research things and find the best one. So every summer he would research to find the best bike that would be for me and then it would get to be August and he would say, well, let's just wait for next season so you can get the ne next model. In fact, Bruce remembers this. He got a bike, you know, he was four or five years old and here I was 11 and still didn't have a bike yet. Um, and I finally got a bike for my friend he wasn't happy that I went behind his back and did this. But I got really involved in the biking club here and told him how I only had a hybrid um, bike and everybody had road bikes. Um, so he took me to the bike store. I said, well, my dad finally bought me a bike. Um, despite who my father was, uh, he might have had me, because of him, made me stronger stronger person and 
taught me how to endure and survive and fight for myself. Let's rise for the memorial prayer. Hail Mole Rahamim, Shochem Bam Romim, Hametzei Menucha Nechona, Tachat Kanfei HaShchina, Bemalot Kedoshim, Utehorim, Anabal HaRachamim HaStirehu, Vatsay Terken Afaf Ali Olamim, Utroor Vitzorachem Et Nishmato, Adonai Hunachalato, we're now going to lower the casket. We're supposed to move away from the spot just for a few moments. The dust returns to the earth as it was, but the soul returns to God who gave grand strength and comfort to those who are mourning. Adonai Natan, Adonai Laka, Yihishem Adonai Mevarach. God gives and God takes away. Blessed be the name of God. If anyone would like to come forward, it's considered an act of respect to the deceased to take part in every step of the burial. So this is for the mourners and of course the family and any friends of course would like to come forward, take a handful of dirt and throw it on top of the casket. This is a way for you to participate in everything that needs to happen today to care for a loved one.
cards there. This is your first Kaddish for your father. You can do it with me. Yid Gadal v'Yid Kaddash Shemei Rabah V'Alma Ibra Firute V'Amlit Malchute V'Chayechon U'V'Yomechon U'V'Chaye V'Chol Beit Yisrael V'Agala U'V'Zman Kari V'Maru Amen Yehe Shemei Rabah Mevarach Le'Olam U'Lomei Omaya Yid Barach V'Yishtabah V'Yid Pa'ar V'Yid Romam V'Yid Naseh be it Hadar, be it Ale, be it Alal, Shemed Kudisha, Berihu, La Ela, Min Kol Berhata, Beshirata, Tush Berhata, Benechamata, Damiran, be Alma, be Maru, Amen. Yehe Shaloma, Rabba, Min Shemaya, Bechayim, Alenu, be Al Kol Yisrael, be Maru, Amen. O Se Shalom, be Ramav, Uya Se Shalom. Aleinu v'alkol Yisrael v'maru amen. Let me say to you as mourners, Hamakom yinachem etchem, betok sh'ar v'leitzion v'rishalayim. May God comfort you who is mourning today, together with all others who mourn in the house of Israel and in all the world, and we all say amen. Services are now concluded. Thank you for coming.